I'd like to take reason number eight, which is AIDS poses unique challenges and requires an exceptional response. And we often hear uh, today that it's time to normalize the response to HIV. And I think it's something we absolutely have to aspire to. Um, HIV, we should be able to normalize HIV, but we should consider the situation we are in, in which our governments often provide exceptionally bad responses to HIV. We should consider that we are nearly 30 years into this epidemic and we have uh, tens of millions of people living with HIV in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we have many members of parliament in those countries who have died of HIV or AIDS. And not a single member of parliament in any of those countries in the continent of Africa has dis publicly disclosed his or her HIV status. This shows how severe the stigma still is, how, how uh, people fear disclosure of their HIV status. If, we, if 30 years after this epidemic has started, we still don't have a single person elected to office who has disclosed their status, if we see vast um, parts of the world in which um, people have uh, no access uh, to HIV prevention when they are people who use drugs, when they are men who have sex with men, when they are women living in relationship with, with men who deny them their rights, when they are children um, who, whose right to education and etc. is being denied. How can we then uh, say HIV should be normalized. We really need to deal with those issues and, and by removing those barriers and problems then eventually be able to, to deal with HIV as with other diseases. Currently we're not and we have exceptionally bad responses and that's why we need an exceptionally good response and, uh, and recognize that human rights are the centers to overcome those barriers. For further information on human rights, HIV AIDS, and to endorse now more than ever the joint statement, visit www.hivhumanrightsnow.org.